Hey guys, it's BJ Kissel again with another video for the Arrowhead Pride YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking to you about the top five training camp battles that the Chiefs will have this week when we start training camp. The first one's going to be between Dontari Poe and Amon Gordon at the nose tackle position. I think it should be also of note that it's not just the nose tackle position that these two guys will be competing for in training camp. In our subset 2-4-5 defense, they're going to be competing for that same role that Wallace Gilberry had played last year and that eventually Amon Gordon had taken over for late in the season to play next to Alan Bailey along the defensive line in that specific defense. But uh, there's probably going to be a rotation during the season, but it will be interesting to see at the end of training camp who's taken over as the first team guy in both of those defenses. And I think it'll be good news for Chiefs fans if Dontari Poe beats out Amon Gordon. That could mean really special things for this defense if Dontari Poe is coming along like the most optimistic Chiefs fans hope he does. The next battle I want to talk about is the inside linebacker position between Brandon Seiler and Javon Belcher. I think Brandon Seiler's torn Achilles injury in the preseason last year has kind of gotten lost as you know we had the huge injuries with the ACL crew last season with Tony Moyaki, Eric Berry, and Jamal Charles. So I think Siler's injury may have gotten lost a little bit, but um, I think that if he's healthy, he does have a role in this defense. I think when he was brought in last year, he was going to kind of have that, that coverage ability from the linebacker position that Javon Belcher um, doesn't necessarily have as he's more of a run-stuffing guy. But uh, I do, do think that it should be worth of noting that if Javon Belcher is going to lose his starting position, if Brandon Siler is going to take that over, it's not just the physical abilities on the field that he's going to have to prove that he can you know, do better than Javon Belcher because Javon Belcher is the guy on this defense that makes the calls. He gets the signs from the sideline. He relays that to all the players in the defense so everybody knows what they're doing. So it's not just what's going on in the field and knowing your assignments. You have to know everybody else's and you have to be the guy to relay those signs. So, um, and if Siler isn't fully healthy, if that battle doesn't end up happening, you know, if he doesn't come back from the Achilles injury the way that uh, Chiefs fans hope he should, then I think maybe a guy like Dexter Heyman jumps in the mix as an undrafted free agent from Louisville, kind of like uh, Javon Belcher was out of Maine as he was an undrafted free agent also a few years ago. The other battle I want to talk about is Daquan Menzi and Javier Arenas. These guys both played at Alabama under Nick Saban, and they both played that star role or that, uh, that nickel slot corner position. And it'll be interesting to see in training camp as those guys play the same position in college, and now they're battling you know, on the same team for that starting position for the Chiefs. I think it's great news for the Chiefs because you can't have too much depth in a secondary when you have guys like Peyton Manning and Phillip Rivers in your division. You can never have enough good quality defensive backs. And I think the recent arrest of Donald Washington may not necessarily affect those two guys, but it does free up a little bit of competition in the defensive backfield. I don't think Donald Washington's going to make the team after this. And uh, I think between Menzi and Arenas, um, you know, competing for that starting position and then having a quality depth guy behind him, I think that means good things for the defensive backfield. And uh, another, you know, training camp battle to watch is Dexter McCluster and Devin Wiley. I think, you know, who is the fourth wide receiver for the Chiefs right now? Obviously, you have Dwayne Bowe, Steve Breston, and John Baldwin, but who's the next guy in line after those guys? You know, McCluster's going to get his carries at running back. I think that that's, goes without saying. Hopefully, it's just not all in third and long in a draw situation. But does Devin Wiley overtake the slot role as he's more of a, a wide receiver specifically as his talents, you know, at Fresno State kind of showed us that he can play the slot receiver position really well. And, you know, another one, the punt returning. You know, Dexter McCluster, Javier Arenas, you know, took over most of the punt returns last year. And, you know, Devin Wiley has that ability too. So does he sneak in there and take some of those returns away from Arenas or McCluster? I think uh, maybe we'll see some of that in training camp. We'll see, you know, who's taking the majority of the punt returns in training camp. And another thing with uh, McCluster and Wiley, is there a way for Brian Dable to use both those guys on the field at the same time? I think what we might get a little you know, sneak peek of what we're gonna see in the season during training camp with the way these guys are lined up, what kind of packages and schemes he has set up, and is there a way that he can incorporate both of those players as guys with similar skill sets that defensive defenses have to account for? Can he find a way to get those guys on the field at the same time? The last battle I wanna talk about is between Ryan Lilja and Jeff Allen. I think last year, you know, Ryan Lilja had a down year. 
he went on record as saying that the lockout hurt him. He didn't have the regular offseason like he normally did. And he didn't come in as prepared or as ready for the season as he had in years past. So I'm expecting a bounce back year from Lilja, but I'm also expecting you know Jeff Allen to push him a little bit. And it'll be interesting to see, does Jeff Allen continue to be a jack of all traits like he was in college, or does he find a specific position and work there you know, for the most for most of his reps because there were, it wasn't just during the season that Jeff Allen you know, at Illinois last year played you know, left tackle, left guard, right guard, right tackle. It was, in this, it was on the same series. They moved him all over the place from play to play and uh, I think that versatility is gonna be great for the Chiefs, but it will be interesting to see where he's taking his snaps once, the, once training camp begins. So that is definitely a battle to look out for, but I assume that uh, Ryan Lilja is gonna win that battle and you're gonna see with Jeff Allen, the same thing you saw with John Osimo and Rodney Hudson, where they sit for a year and learn, and then they take over the following year. But uh, those are the five training camp battles that uh, I'm looking forward to with the Chiefs. You know, let me know if you have any others that I missed or if you disagree with any of the picks that I've had. But uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Arrowhead Pride YouTube channel. And also don't forget to subscribe to the SB Nation NFL channel. That way you can check up on the competition the Chiefs will have and see what battles other AFC West teams and other teams around the NFL have as they enter their training camps. So I'm BJ Kissel and thank you for watching the new Arrowhead Pride YouTube channel.